You ready to start? Yeah? All right. Good morning, everyone. What I mean is that Wayne, I'm the start of Wayne, the Jishu Zong Tsai, I'm also a happy person. So what he said just now is, his name is Wayne. He's the CTO of Stark and Wayne. He's also a happy fruit. That means he's a Gao Xu Jiao. He's a Stark and Wayne Gong Su, the Yun Gong Chong Shi. My name is Gao Xu Jiao. I'm a cloud engineer of Stark and Wayne. Bless you. <laughs> Today we will be talking about Shield a backup and restore solution for Cloud Foundry and its services. We'll fill you in on what that actually means. Before we start to talk about Shield, please allow this happy fruit to talk about Stack and Wing quickly. <laughs> Stark and Wayne is a consultancy that helps you be a superhero to your organization and clients by or customers by succeeding with your Cloud Foundry and PaaS story. We help with everything from the infrastructure level up through automating all of the operations of the PaaS itself through the 12-factor uh, applications. We can help you flush out that entire story. We basically come in. We fill in any gap, integrate all the components, integrate maybe you have some legacy uh, big iron things or whatever. We help you integrate those into your Cloud Foundry. We apply automation and all of those things. And then we also focus on teaching you how to maintain this thing moving forward yourself. Essentially, we come in, we partner with you and your team. We work alongside you guys to carry you past the steep learning curve and greatly increase the speed of your adoption getting you started faster and sooner. So that's Stark and Wing. <laughs> so back to Shield. What exactly is the problem that we are trying to solve with Shield? Let's first take a very brief look at the current state of backups, restores for both Cloud Foundry itself as well as related services. Today, there is no overall comprehensive backup and restore solution for Cloud Foundry and its services. Sure, there's a lot of little projects here and there and tools to get you bits and pieces and some tribal knowledge, which you have to like sacrifice some kind of animal to in, in order to back up successfully or whatever, but really not a good story. PCF itself does have a very well-documented manual backup process with a diagram that makes your eyes bleed because of the number of components and steps. Um, true story, we had to rush one of ours to the hospital after, anyways. So basically, it, it's, a, it's there, it exists, and it is very well written. There's also a tile that can, uh, P a PCF has that can allow you to like back up certain components and stuff like that, but comprehensive, overall, systemic, not really, you're kind of out on your own. As for services, ah, oh, wonderful services. I love services, I love playing with services, service brokers, ooh, good times. Unfortunately, if you are a service implementer or service operator, it's kind of punted. That's yours to figure out how to back up your service, how to provide that. A lot of people wrap custom APIs. They run Cloud Foundry apps that tie to their services. All kinds of solutions exist to this today. But there still is no real, up until now, dun, 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 great like story for this. Which does bring us to why you guys are all here listening other than the fact that it's the closest thing to the registration desk. Um, basically, why did we start Shield? Why did we go this way? Why did we keep on working on this product at all? So we've been helping GE with this uh, little project called Predix.io, and they are some amazing people doing amazing things, and we couldn't be happier to be helping out with this project. A lot of uh, stuff was talked about investigating their disaster recovery scenarios, right? You're in production, you better have a disaster recovery scenario, or as Dr. Nick said, you, all you got is a giant cache of things, right? So we were helping them with this on the pre side. We needed to flush out what the uh, uh, disaster recovery backup restore solutions were for not only Cloud Foundry Core itself, right? But we also needed to focus on, well, what about the services too, you know? We don't, 
we've, we've got to figure out the solutions to those. Is this just a, we're going to document these on the internal wikis and we go through these uh, ritualistic incantations in order to summon the backup beast and whatever? Or do we have a sane way of moving forward with this? Well, some very brilliant people that work uh, at Stark and Wayne actually came up with these things and well, with, with, with an approach to this. We already had a project that they were toying with on their own uh, in, in an open source that basically hadn't had a lot of effort because, well, frankly, you know, on your own time, that's not a lot of time, right? So G, in order to help GE, we figured out that this project would be a perfect fit for this effort. So with GE's help allowing us to work on this a lot, we were able to carry this project across the finish line. As of today, this project, which we're talking about today, has been running in production at GE for over six months now. So it's a really encouraging thing. Very, very good open source story there. Uh, thanks to GE, of course. Shield, as it stands, is essentially a drop-in solution to anybody's Bosch releases, and you can tie in the services, service brokers, all of these things. So this does address the services story. Essentially, it allows you to focus on, as a service implementer, remember that was on your, either the implementer or operators of the services to figure out these things. Shield allows you as a service implementer or operator to focus on either um, implementing your service or uh, operating your service. And Shield basically focuses on your disaster recovery, backup and restore stories, as well as migration stories, which you will get, hear about a little bit later. This addresses all of those things. Specifically, what kind of services, you might ask? Well, today, Shield backs up and restores services such as PostgreSQL, RabbitMQ, Redis, et cetera, et cetera, and several others. I'm not going to go into details on how. I'll leave that for later. But it could support any services we need. So for cloud, uh, core Cloud Foundry itself, Shield can also back up Cloud Foundry as well as Bosch. Essentially, it allows you to back up any Bosch deployment. Cloud Foundry is deployed via Bosch, can back up, oh, hey, I get it. So essentially, any Bosch deployed system that you want, all you need to do is essentially write a plugin to Shield to back up whatever the thing is that you are backing up, if the plugin doesn't exist already. You essentially deploy Shield alongside your existing Bosch deployments using this mechanism within Bosch called co-located Bosch releases. And now I'm going to let XJ fill you in on the details of the project. What? Wait, I was enjoying your presentation. <laughs> your turn. OK. Uh, so now I will talk through the framework architecture of Shield and the features of Shield. The framework of Shield is pretty simple, as you can see here. Uh, it consists of four parts, a core daemon, target plugin, storage plugin, and user interfaces. One question quite uh, often asked by our client is, why are there both target plugin and storage plugin? So I will answer this question here by explaining how backup and restore works. So when we backup data, the target plugin will retrieve data from your data system, then send it to storage plugin. The storage plugin here will upload a single data blob to your storage system, whatever it is you configured. Then it will return a key to you, which you can use later uh, for your data retrieval. Sometimes accidents happen, we lose data. Then we come to the point we have to restart the data. So when we restart the data, how it works, the workflow is like this. The storage plugin will use the key to retrieve the data, then send over to target plugin. The target plugin will just load the data into your system. Then you got all your data back. Simple, right? The next piece is a core daemon. Core daemon is a central component of Shield. It has many different functionalities. Here I will cover, uh, cover several important ones. 
first one, Cardamon is responsible for metadata management. Basically, it will track what target and store exist, what jobs you configured, what schedule retention policy you defined, what backup restore jobs have taken place, and uh, what are their results. Also, it will tell you what tasks are in flight. The code also can configure your backup jobs, like you want to decide what you want to backup, right? Where you want to put it. Then you can configure job as you need. A task here basically is just a job, an instance of job being run. So it can run backup and restore jobs according to the schedule we talked about earlier, or we can kick off backup and restore jobs on demand. Quite nice, huh? Scheduling, shield car allow you to define the schedule, like what time you want to back up. Maybe 1 a.m., that's a golden time. Or how often you want to back up, daily, hourly. How long you want to keep your backup? You keep one year, or you keep a couple of months? You can all configure that. Next one is the card also exposes the metrics, statistics of your backup jobs. It allows you search all your backup archives to see if your backup jobs are finished successfully, is your restore finished successfully. All those metrics also can be aggregated. You can send those metrics over to any aggregation system you have. The, the last piece uh, the, of the framework is the user interface. We designed a web UI and a CLI. This, uh, as you can see, this is a screenshot of Shield web UI. So using this web UI, we are able to view and edit your jobs, uh, view and run your backup and restore on demand. Also, you can edit or update your schedule, your retention policy. Uh, on top of that, it, it, it also shows us from here, you will see, it will also show us what's the running task we have and what's the uh, complete task uh, audit log. So it will show you all those. It's simple, but it has everything here. Shield also have a very well documented extensive CLI. Uh, Probably you cannot see clearly here, but you can see uh, a basic idea here. So that, that basically covered the framework of Shield. Next, I'm going to tell you a couple of stories about the features of Shield. Shield is distributed as a Bosch release. Just like all other production grade enterprise software is, right? You know, like for example, maybe Cloud Foundry? Hmm? Yeah, that. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to make you guys laugh. Um, so, in order to use Shield to back up data, what we need to do here is very simple. You just configure your Shield agent on your deployment. For example, if you want to back up your Cloud Foundry, okay. Configure Shield agent on your CF deployment. You want backup RabbitMQ, Redis, all that? Just configure Shield agent on your deployment. It's pretty easy. Also, where you want to store your data? I may want to store on my local file system. Okay, configure your store on your local file system. You may want to store it on your S3. That's doable too. Or Swift, all that. Like, uh, it can support like many different of target and store. Uh, plugins. Yeah. Another thing I want to say is using Shield, it becomes very straightforward if you delete your entire deployment, then you recover everything after redeploying. That tells us what? This enabled a functional disaster recovery plan. Neat, huh? Oh, I love this story. Yes, Shield can also back up and restore your Bosch. 
So I will share with you a smoking hole story here. Imagine you have Shield running. You have all your deployments being backed up by Shield. Then someone, some bad guy, burned down your data center, like burned right down to the ground, nothing left. Now zero piece of your hardware is working now. What are you going to do? <laughs> uh, probably the first step you want to set up a new hardware, right? Then what? Mm, maybe we can spin up a Bosch. Then we can use Bosch to deploy Shield. After that, we can use Shield to restore our deployment. Guess what happened now? You just wiped out your Bosch database. Your Shield deployment is offered now. So we designed Shield in a way to solve this problem. When you want to recover your Bosch, you don't need a Shield daemon running. Yeah, we just designed that way. If you are interested, check our repo later. Um, <laughs> so you can, you can just spin up your Bosch, use this excellent feature of Shield to recover all your deployments, include Bosch, uh, include Bosch Shield itself. Shield is not only for operation folks. Uh -huh. There is also a feature where, where you can enable like service application users to use Shield to manage your database backup and restore. I, I will share you another example here. Assume that you have an application using PostgreSQL database. Somehow over time you got lots and lots of data you need a larger database. Now, how you are going to migrate your data? Use Shield. Uh, so it's simple. You just use Shield to back up your database. Then you create a larger database instance. Oh, also, we have RDBG, which is a reliable PostgreSQL database service. Yeah. Um, OK, come back to Shield. So then you spin up a larger Postgres database. Then you use Shield to restore your data on this new larger database. Guess what? You get all data in the new database. Very easy, right? Oh, writing plugins is just a piece of cake. Yummy one. Cheesecake, strawberry, ice cream, <laughs> you name it. OK, why writing plugin is just a piece of cake? Because you start with the framework we already provide for you. Basically, you don't need to worry about metadata management. You don't need to worry about schedule, monitoring, uh, retention policy. You can just focus on your solution, how you back up, restore your data. Imagine this. You don't want someone who has access to your Shield API then just can access all your backup and restore information, right? That will be terrible. So we designed the Shield in a way we have authentication. It, it's implemented using OAuth2, and it can be done with basic HTTP authentication, uh, support Git, GitHub authentication, or you can do it through CFUA. So that's all the cool features I want to share with you guys. Now uh, let Happy Fruit share with you the future of the Shield. So let me take you on a very brief, trippy explanation of what we see or hallucinate as the future of Shield in sort of priority order as we see it. However, that obviously could be influenced by your voices. All right. Primarily, the next one on deck is encryption and decryption. Encryption and decryption at rest. Okay, We want this to be fully supported out of the box by default. This is going to be supported at the plug-in level. So basically, if you write into your plug-in, here's how I get the data from my servers and here's how I restore it, you automatically get the encryption. And you didn't have to worry about it. That's pretty sweet. Crypto for free. Yeah, like that always happens. But in Shield, it does. It's pretty cool. Well. It will. Right, Jeff. All right. <laughs> Next up, 
So uh, we're all familiar with the concept of incremental backups. You take one massive backup that takes god awful forever, and then you just kind of take backups at regular small intervals to record the changes as, uh, over time until you take your next massive one. Hopefully not daily and they don't take more than 24 hours to run, but hey, that's another story. So basically why we, do, we want to target this as a supported feature for uh, the plugins? Well, two reasons, right? This is about uh, minimizing the storage requirements making it more, a little more streamlined, as well as reducing the amount of wall clock, the time and CPU and resources that are attributed to the process of keeping backups through time. Next up, we want to take what we have today for monitoring, which is very simple and basic, and we want to extend this to make it easier for operations folks to uh, get more introspection into shield operations itself such as, wouldn't it be great if not just knowing when jobs started, when they complete, did they succeed, did they fail? Well, what was the average runtime of jobs for this particular plugin or this particular system or this particular thing, right? Average runtimes of execution, average sizes of the backups of all these things through time. Like it helps you to kind of identify, hey, that guy's storing large binaries in his database. What's going on, guy? or whatever else you're actually doing, right? So we want to make it take the metrics to the next level and make it even more useful for uh, keeping track of what is going on and allowing you to get to uh, root cause analysis of why this fill up much faster or preferably even way ahead of time, right? So obviously there's more to that story than that, but that's a really brief synopsis of that. Another thing, there is one recurring theme that keeps recurring don't worry. His, young, his native language is not English. Bash is. <laughs> yeah. Try this again. There is one recurring theme while we help folks with their production environments, and that is handling of sensitive storage, uh, uh, storage of sensitive things like credentials, right? Encryption, decryption, keys, passwords, <laughs> all of these things. This is a very high priority item within organizations, and it's usually Unfortunately, it should be ahead of time, maybe, but usually it's a, woo, we're running in production, and oh, now we got to do that. Ugh. But still, it's a huge thing to address. Well, we want to make it easy for Shield to uh, enable that story for everybody in a straightforward manner with, so that they don't have to bake up something half-baked, and you know, we want to make a fully-baked solution so they can have their cake and eat it too, right? Cake. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to... Uh, take and add integration points into Shield where all the right uh, points of uh, encryption keys and credentials and all these things, we're going to allow them to be stored and retrieved in systems such as Vault. So that's the credentials handling. So I mean, we have other ideas for the future. We'd love to hear even more ideas, OK? So what I would highly encourage everyone to do is get yourselves involved, right? It's a, it's a young project, but it is a production project. We encourage everybody to basically help shape its future. Like, how are you going to do that, right? Well, it's, just, oh, it's an open source project. How do you do that with open source projects? You deploy it. You play with it. You tweak it. You read the code. You ask questions, right? You uh, send the feedback, pull requests. You write a plugin. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> I didn't think of that. You write plugins. Hey, I've got the most awesome database in the world. Here's a plug-in uh, for Shield to allow it to be backed up and restored in the context of Cloud Foundry. We all win. Great. Um, so yeah, so basically, you can also, so that's all on the open source front. And also, you know, you can come to us at Stark and Wayne and help you succeed in incorporating Shield into your own infrastructures. Help us to define your disaster recovery story and train your people on how to actually use it should disaster befall. Let's hope not, but eh, it happens. So basically, if you do decide to or want us to let us help, right, you can email us there, be a hero at Stark and Wayne, or we're here this week, right? Come talk to us at our booth over there. I highly encourage it. Yeah. Come for free t-shirt, <laughs> free business card, free handshake, free hats. <laughs> Hugs are from me. <laughs> handshake from me. Boy. Shisha, name your mail and Thanks for your attention. Do you have any questions? Keep in mind that 
we are almost out of time, and you can come visit us at the booth in mass for actual questions as well. But. In the case of services, have you given much thought to how to restore the state of service instances in the CCDB as a part of restoring not just the service itself, but the services state from Cloud Foundry's perspective? Service state? Wait. We can Can be gotten to. Any others? I know why there's no others. Because they will all come to our booth. Ah, uh, yeah. See you guys all at the booth in the exhibit hall. Happy to talk to you. Thank you.